Hi guys, Jonathan Ferguson here with another interesting historic firearm from the Royal Armouries collection to show you. And at first glance, it may not be that remarkable. So on the side of this um, broom handle pistol, as they're nicknamed, it's uh, const, which is um, short for construction, as in made. And the date below is 4th of the 10th, 1926. And it has the Mauser barrel logo in the middle. Okay, so this was made in October 1926. Well, that's well after the, the 1896 design of the Mauser had been out for some time. So what's this? Um, it's a prototype. What's it a prototype of? Well, the trigger, if you really know um, firearms, might be a clue. Then again, it might not. What gives it away is the switch on the side. So that throws back and forth, and it is marked E and R um, for Einzelfeuer, single shot, and Ryanfeuer, uh, serial fire. Um, in German, obviously, and uh, apologies to my to our German viewers <laughs> if I've butchered the pronunciation. Um, speaking of butchering German pronunciation, this is a design by Fidel um, Fidela, who is one of the two German um, brothers who originated the design in the first place back in 1896. And it's his patent. You can find the patent uh, online, dated 1921, so even earlier than this. Um, why is this important? Well, most people um, who know this type of, of pistol are under the impression that the fully automatic C96, the Schnellfeuer rapid fire pistol, was invented in 1928 by the Spanish company Astra, who were um, frankly ripping off the uh, broom handle design and added the twist of making it fully automatic, and that became very popular in China. Um, but two years prior to that, Mauser produced this fully functional select fire broom handle pistol. And without going into the details of it, the lever or the selector switch in the various versions of the Chanel foyer simply allows the trigger to go further to the rear on automatic, which keeps the sear out of the way and lets the bolt just run back and forth at a very high rate. Uh, and this thing is, is a fairly devastating close quarter battle weapon. Um, whether fitted with, well, especially, in fact, mainly <laughs> when fitted with the famous Mauser holster stock. So the gun can live in here as a holster, or it can be used as a, effectively a submachine gun when it's capable of automatic fire like this. Or you can clip the stock off um, and just use it as a, as a normal pistol on, on single shot. So, um, it's, it's sort of the next logical step from the standard C96, which was semi-automatic, but had the, had the stock, and you could use it as a sort of a, a carbine. Post First World War, when the submachine gun's uh, potential is realized, this makes a certain amount of sense. It's a sort of transformer gun that you can convert from a pretty compact, powerful pistol for its day to a, um, well, equally compact submachine gun. The downside of this one is it only has the standard 10 round internal magazine. Now this, uh, the market wasn't seen to be there in 1926 by Mauser and so Astra beat them to the punch in 1928 which prompted Mauser to come back around to this idea but they didn't take Fidel's design, they took a design by Joseph Nickel, improved by a chap called Westinger and they came up with the Schnellfeuer that um, those of you who know your uh, 1930s, 1940s firearms history will be very familiar with. So same basic design, but it's the modernized, easy to produce version. The 1930 model was what was the basis for this. In 1931, they uh, come up with a totally different um, internal mechanism, but it does this, exactly the same thing, just in a different arrangement. They replace the internal magazine for detachable magazine which means you can have a 20 round magazine if you want, which is much, makes it a much more capable um, quasi submachine gun. And the selector switch, with, which is that slightly awkward lever that we saw on the prototype, has become this 
rocking planchette shaped switch with a push button so that you don't accidentally put it on full auto and fill the air with bullets by accident. Um, so this, this became, this was never um, a tremendous success, but it was an important niche weapon for a while. Did see use in the Second World War uh, in German hands. And it all started in 1926 with this very rare and important prototype. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed this short video. Um, if you, well, please like and subscribe in, in the usual YouTube fashion. But if you'd like to think about donating any money to the, to the Royal Armouries, um, it's tough times for museums at the moment, as I'm sure you know, there will be links in the description. Um, and if you choose to, you can even become a member. Thanks, guys. Take care.